Hi, so what I'm going to tell you about on this video is I'm going to explain to you the way that accountants think when they put a profit and loss account together. Ooh, scary. Okay, and I'm going to do that by telling you a little story. And my story is about a guy called Charlie who was a plumber. And Charlie decided to start up his own business. So one month, let's call it January, Charlie decided to start his own business as a plumber. And he got a job in January, and the job was fitting a bathroom suite for someone. The cost of the job that he quoted was £600. Now, on my right-hand side, I'm going to show you two things. First of all, I'm going to show you the cash flows that Charlie had in the month of January. And that's going to be shown under the heading cash flow. So that's the same as his bank statement. It's what went in and out of his bank. And then on the other side, I'm going to show you what the accountant would put in the profit and loss account or income statement. Okay, so cash flow first. Actually, in January, he did the job and he finished it in January, sent out his bill, but he got no money from the client. So his actual revenue, his actual cash receipt was zero, as you'll see popping up there. Okay, so he had zero cash coming in. Oh dear. He did, however, have to put some fuel in his van. So he put £20 fuel in his van. So you can see that £20 coming out there. He also had to go and buy some materials. Now, he went to the wholesaler to get the materials, and the, the wholesaler actually said to him, because he knew Charlie from his previous job, he said to Charlie, well, I'll trust you for a month. I'll give you a month's credit so you can pay me in February. So actually, his materials cost him zero in terms of the cash that he paid out. But the full cost of the materials, when he has to pay for them, will be £50. So he put £50 worth of materials into the job that he did, okay? But he actually paid no cash in January. And the last thing he had to do was he had to rent his van. He didn't buy his van, he rented it. And he paid three months' rent in advance in January. So that three months' rent cost him, yeah, £600. So that was effectively £200 a month for January February and March. So as you can see in the cash flow, things don't look too good. No money coming in, £620 going out. So he's got an overdraft of £620. Unfortunately, his bank manager was very sympathetic and allowed him to have a £1,000 overdraft. Now that's the way his bank statement looks, his cash flow statement. But what would the accountant do? How would the accountant show that in the profit and loss account? Well, what the accountant would do, and you're going to see that on the other side now, the profit and loss account stroke income statement. What the accountant would do is, first of all, he would say, hang on a sec, we did do the job in January. So when I do January's profit and loss account, I want to recognise that revenue of £600 in January. So the revenue actually goes in because he earned it in January. doesn't matter that he didn't receive it. He actually earned it. So it goes into the profit and loss account. We recognise it. Now, you might think that's, that's not very cautious. That's not very prudent. But you know what? We are going to get that money. We wouldn't be in business unless we thought we were going to actually eventually receive it. So because he earned it in January, it goes into his statement of income and expenses, his profit and loss statement for January. With the fuel, spent £20 on fuel. He actually paid the £20. He used the fuel up. So the accountant shows that as an expense relating to January. Next, we move on to the materials now. With the materials, he didn't actually pay for the materials in January, but he did use them. So he used that £50 worth of materials, and he actually had a bill from the supplier, from the wholesaler. So the accountant, as you'll see, puts that £50 in, because we use the materials in January. Yeah? And the last thing is the van rental. Now, we paid £600 for the van rental, but we only used one month's worth of that van rental period. So we only put in one third because we paid £600 for three months, but we only used it for January. So we only put one third, the bit that relates to January, in there. And so now, if we look at it from a profit and loss account viewpoint, you can see things look much rosier. We've actually made a profit from trading of £330 in the month, if we add it up. You can see that down at the bottom. And it's this picture, this profit and loss account picture, that the accountant views as the true performance of the business during the month. Now, what we've done here is we've used something called the accruals principle. And the accruals principle shows income and expenses when they are earned for income and when they are incurred for expenses. 
in the period that they are earned and incurred, not when they are received and paid. Remember, we don't just prepare one financial statement, we prepare three. So we prepare a profit and loss account, which shows things when they're earned and incurred. And we also prepare a cash flow statement so we can see what we've received and what we haven't yet received. And those two statements complement each other. But it's the profit and loss account that shows us how well we've done from trading in the month. Another term actually for the accruals principle is the matching principle. What we're trying to do is we're trying to match the income to the period and the expenses to the period. So there you go. That's what Charlie's profit and loss account or income and expenditure statement would look like for the month of January. Okay, I'm gonna give you another few examples on this accruals idea so I can make sure you've, you've got it, you've got an understanding of it. So let's say I, little example gonna come up on the screen here. Uh, let's say I pay my landlord three months rent of 60,000 in March. So I've paid them the rent for March, April and May. How much would I put into my profit and loss account as rent for March? Have a think about it. If you're thinking 20,000, one third of the rent, the answer's popped up on the screen now as you can see, then that's the right answer. One third would go in March, one third in April, one third in May. Another example. Um, let's say I've been in business for two months and I haven't yet received an electricity bill. And I've, I've estimated, because I've had a look at my meter, that I owe about £6,000 for the two months. And let's say I started business in January. So I started in January, I've gone through January, February. I think I owe about £6,000 for the two months. I, I have a guessed it's about six grand. How much would go in January's profit and loss account as an electricity expense? Have a think. If you're thinking £3,000, then that's correct. We would make an accrual of £3,000 in January's profit and loss account. And the last one, let's say I buy a machine for 60,000 in January, and let's say the machine is gonna last me five years. What's the cost of using the machine for one month out of 60 months? Five years is 60 months, isn't it? What would I put in my profit and loss account as the cost of using the machine? If you're thinking, well, you'd put a 60th in, so that's a thousand pounds, then you're right popped up on the screen again. You put a thousand pounds in. And actually that's called depreciation. And we'll move on and talk a little bit more about depreciation in one of the other videos when we look at the balance sheet. So they're my little examples. So I'd just like to finish off by summarizing this accruals principle. What the accountant is doing when the accountant is preparing a profit and loss account is using this accruals principle, yeah? And what I like to think about it as is like the accountant has a big bucket. He's got a big bucket of transactions, a big bucket of things that have happened in the month. And what he's doing with those transactions is sometimes he's looking at the transactions and saying, those transactions, they don't belong to this month, so he needs to take them out of the bucket. And he's also looking in the bucket and saying, hang on, there are some transactions that are missing. There's some tra transactions that should be in there that aren't. And so he has to put some other transactions into the bucket that relate to the month. Yeah? Like the electricity bill that we mentioned before that we haven't had yet. We need to put it into the bucket. And once he's finished, he's got a bucket with all the transactions for the month and that bucket becomes the profit and loss account with everything that relates to the month in that bucket. Everything that relates to the month shown to the manager of the business who wants to understand the business's performance for the month. Okay, that's the accruals principle. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Uh, have a go at the questions that follow and then move on to the next video. Bye-bye for now.